It's been a long night of fun for young Carla Westland. But as she tells our special correspondent, Kim Goldman, the night is about to get a lot longer. I had people reach out to me that told me the same thing happened to them. And they never had courage to talk about it. And what happened to Carla could happen to any one of us who uses an app to hitch a ride home. They can do whatever they want with you once you're in your car. It's an evening out for the girls at Club Le Jardin, a popular night spot at the red hot center of the Hollywood nightlife scene. And for 28 year old Carla Westland, it's a well deserved break from her busy life. I just started nannying part time for this family. I also was acting on the side and doing some TV production work. I hadn't been out in a while, so I had an opportunity. It was my, my roommate's friend's birthday. After last call, the friends go their separate ways. Carla gets on her cell phone and arranges for a ride. I came out here. I called my boyfriend, I asked him if I could stay at his place, and then I ordered an Uber. It takes only a few minutes. Her car, a black sedan, arrives and she steps inside as the young man behind the wheel pulls away from the curb. But he has no intention of taking her to her destination. In fact, he doesn't even know where she wants to go. Why? Because he's not an Uber driver. Carla got into the wrong car. I got an Uber that I thought was mine. He could have been a nice guy and he could have decided, ma'am, I'm so sorry, I'm not your Uber driver and unfortunately, he just went along with it. Unknown to Carla, the real Uber driver canceled the trip. She never sees the message, and now Carla's in real trouble in a car with a madman who has no business taking her anywhere. And to make matters worse, she falls asleep minutes after getting inside. Did you pass out? Do you remember the specifics of? Yeah, I believe I, I was tired and I just fell asleep. Carla soon wakes up to a total nightmare. The next thing I know, we're parked somewhere. He's in the back seat with me, and he's banging my head against the seat. I had a blue lip. I had blood going down the back of my ear. I can't even imagine what it would feel like to wake up with someone brutalizing. You're just in this mindset where you're just like, you know, get off of me. Like, stop. Like, what are you doing? Carla is rapidly losing the battle. Incredibly, instead of panicking in the midst of all her fear, she puts her mind to work. I'm not stronger than this man, unfortunately, and there's nothing I can do in this situation, so I completely flipped tactics, and I decided I have to make this guy feel as comfortable as possible, because if he thinks for one second that I'm gonna go to the cops, then he's gonna kill me. But her attacker has only begun. Made me take my clothes off. Um, and he started, you know, kissing me everywhere. And then he began raping me. And I just knew I needed to be strong and just take it and try to survive. Do you remember what you said or? Yeah, I was just, I was trying to get him to stop and I was just saying things along the lines of, this is really stupid. You know, I have to go to the bathroom. Right. This is just like this is just stupid. At that point, I think he knew as he was doing it. Oh my gosh! This. What am I doing? What am I doing? Even when it's over, she has to use every psychological tactic she can think of to keep herself alive. I knew that that was going to be a very scary moment because I knew that those consequences were going to hit him, right. and he is going to panic, and he's not going to know what to do. So I remember seeing on a television show that if you start talking about your life, it forces your attacker to humanize you and they'll be less inclined to hurt you. Um, so with that in mind, I just started rambling about my life. It works. She says her assailant begins to break down and he discloses some incredibly revealing information about himself. He started crying and he opened up about his own life. He said he is from Long Beach. He's the oldest of four boys. He runs an accounting firm with his brother and his other brother is a cop, which is information that I later gave to the cops at the hospital. 
for three tense hours, she's been a prisoner in his car. And now the rapist makes a stunning offer. He wants to drive her to her original destination, the home of her boyfriend. But is he deceiving her? Had me laying down in the back seat so I couldn't see. We pull up to the end of an alley nearby my boyfriend's place. I couldn't believe that I was actually, there was a chance he was actually gonna let me go. And then he got out of the car, he put my phone kind of far away on this little stump just to make sure that I wouldn't turn around and take a picture of his license plate. Were you watching all of this happening from the back seat? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I just slowly got out of the car and then he just zoomed off. But Carla is free and alive thanks largely to her amazing presence of mind while being brutally attacked. Forensic psychologist Dr. Cheryl Errett tells our Kim Goldman she may have saved her own life. The fact that she lived means that what she did was right. Rape is a life-threatening situation. And so when a woman is in a situation where she realizes that someone intends to rape her, very often her self-preservation is more organized around trying to avoid being murdered. And now she's determined to find the man who took her on that ride to hell. In that moment, I was only thinking about surviving. I wasn't thinking about catching him. But obviously, looking back, I'm really glad that he told me all of those things. But later on, I knew that that was really important and that I needed that information in order to catch him. And she wants the world to get a good look at him. I met with a sketch artist who was amazing. He drew the most perfect picture of this guy. And she enlists the help of law enforcement veteran and private investigator Louis Bolaños to keep the search alive in tandem with the police department. She felt that that sketch was spot on. Um, in fact, when she saw it for the first time, it made her cry. Um, powerful statement. And one of the first things they do is go through every single photograph of every single accountant in Long Beach. Lewis says cops told him they think the suspect was lying about himself and trying to throw Carla off his trail. But Carla and Lewis believe he was telling the truth and continue to search on their own for the man who attacked her. No, no, no. We've gone through about 200, we have about 100 left. We reached out to police, but they have not commented on the investigation. There may be at times an investigative reason why they do not keep the victim updated as to what they're doing. Uh, I, I haven't seen that in this particular case. But this young woman has handled all of the horror with a grace and dignity that defies belief. Why do you want to go public with your story? There's just so many women that stay silent and I feel so strongly that we need to speak up, realize that this is wrong, not be afraid of it, not be ashamed of it. This has nothing to do with us. This has everything to do with the other person. And throughout it all, she hopes for only one thing, that her attacker will be caught. Because tonight, somewhere on the storied streets of Hollywood, a uber imposter may still be lurking. And the fair could cost you your life. Did you fear that he was going to kill you? I definitely knew that it was a possibility. Here's another look at the sketch police have released of the driver of that car. If you recognize him, you're asked to call the LAPD. That number is 213-473-0447. Or you can always leave a tip anonymously at crimewatchdaily.com.